When Emily and I are traveling and when we're camping, we like to play cards, and one of the gate card games we really like to play is cribbage. The problem with cribbage is that the cribbage boards can be quite big, and in our micro camper, that means they can take up a lot of space. When we're traveling, when we're doing our, you know, uh, single bag travel across Europe, we uh, don't want to take up a lot of space with a big cribbage board either. So we knew we could buy some travel cribbage boards or something like that, but I really wanted to make one for Emily uh, out of wood myself, and uh, so that's what I did this year for Christmas. So this is what I made. It's a very, th quite, quite thin, quite small, it's about the size of my phone actually, uh, cri uh, cribbage board. I made a little setup to drill all the holes. Well, I shall go back. The week before Christmas, I uh, decided I was going to make this and I didn't have any wood in the house that was gonna work for it. So I went to Home Depot and I went to the scrap section and I started checking out what kind of wood they had. And I found this piece of uh, pine scrap that was about three and a half inches wide, uh, about three quarters of an inch thick and long enough to make, you know, a couple of boards out of it. So I grabbed that and asked the guy how much it would be and he said, just take it. So it was perfect. I got some wood for free. I took it home and I knew that I was gonna have to somehow thin it down from three quarters to three eighths thick, but I left that for a future Chris problem. Uh, then I made a setup using a plunge router and an electric drill. I basically glued the drill to the router, put some spacers in to make sure that the drill was straight up and down, set the router to be the right depth then started drilling the holes. So the holes, to get them in the right place, I printed a template that I designed in Inkscape. So that's a free software for making vector graphics. I came up with a design. It took some iteration to come up with the right, the right path that would fit in, in this shape of a board. Using a two-player version of Cribbage, because I, we don't ever play three-player Cribbage, so I figured that uh, two players would be good enough. So I got that template printed, I cut it out, and then I used double-sided tape to attach it to the piece of wood. Put the piece of wood with the uh, cribbage board template, I put that down on a board, and then on top above that I set up my router and makeshift drill press setup. I even actually glued the router to a board so that it was more stable, and then I just basically slid the board up and down, the uh, the cribbage board, a future crib cribbage board, up and down and drilled all the holes. And it's really easy. I just keep, I uh, had the drill set up with a plug and a power bar so I could turn it on and off. And I had a piece of wood holding the trigger up so that it would always be, it would basically just be an on off. And so then I could push the router down and it would push the drill. There was a little bit of wander in the you know, in the drill bit, it bends a little bit as it goes. Uh, if I was to make this again, I would probably shorten how much of the drill bit was exposed to try and improve that. So the, the holes aren't like perfectly straight, but I think it gives it a little bit of charm because it's got, uh, you know, the, ho the homemade uh, feel to it, but it's still, you know, it's they're close enough that you don't notice it right away if you're just to look at the board. So I got the whole thing drilled out. And then I decided at that point I better get the board thinned down to the right depth because I didn't want it to be a full three-quarter inch piece. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, a planer or a table saw at home that I could do the splitting of this or planing it down very easily. So I decided to go with hand saws. Hand saws. Hand saws. So I used some clamps and uh, clamped this to the side of my work table. First I started with a hacksaw, that wasn't going very quickly, and so then I went and grabbed my camp saw which gets through, you know, six inch pieces of uh, log pretty quickly. So I thought maybe, you know, I could get through something this size pretty quickly as well. It was a bit of work, got me sweating, but I got this split down and so now you can see that it's about three eighths of an inch thick. Luckily, none of my holes went too deep. They were all, you know, short enough. They should have been based on what I set the uh, depth to on the router. Once that was done, I uh, sanded it down. I got, uh, got it pretty smooth on the back and on the front, rounded off the edges a bit. 
then I started going into the drawing and painting of the of the board. So I actually used a thin sharpie to draw the lines. Well, first I did it with pencil. <laughs> then I used uh, red and white acrylic paint to paint the colors on and yellow for the 121 hole at the end for the winning for the winning piece. Once I had that all painted, I uh, drew in the numbers with the, the Sharpie again. And then I did any touch-ups that I needed to do with, uh, you know, cleaning up uh, chips that had come off or parts of the uh, Sharpie that had been covered by paint and that kind of thing. Once I had that all done, I covered the front in a uh, acrylic satin gloss, satin finish to protect it. Once I had that done, I had to figure out what I was going to do for the pins. What I knew I wanted to do was put the, the pins on the back using magnets. So you can see that was the final product here. There's uh, two magnets that are holding the two sets of pins, three pins each. I wanted to be able to put them on the back, so I used, I used a metal paper clip and then I cut it into six pieces that were about the same length. I think they're all about an inch. Then I used epoxy putty to create kind of a, uh, you know, the wedge shape on them, uh, or the cone shape on them. So I put, mixed up some epoxy putty, rolled it onto the ends of the pins, let it harden. Uh, when it wasn't quite fully hard, I shaved them down to a more accurate size for all of the different pieces. And then I let the, the epoxy putty cure for about eight hours or something like that. Then I painted them, uh, covered those in the satin finish again so that they're protected as well. And that was, uh, that was about it for the pins. They're, they're pretty simple to make. Then I needed to figure out how to put them on the back. Putting them on the back, I thought about using uh, the router to cut a strip in the back of the wood or the back of the board. but. In the end, I decided to just use chisels. I basically chiseled out this channel in the back of the board, got it to the right depth that you can't quite see the, the pieces when they're attached to the magnets. They're, it's pretty level. There's Sometimes they stick out a little bit, but if you just roll them, they, they get hidden away. Then I drilled two holes for the magnets. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find my drill bit that was the right size for the, the magnets, and so I used a different one and I was a little worried that it was gonna go too deep and then I would get holes right through the front and I did not want that. So I ended up just drilling a small amount and then chiseling out again the, the rest of the hole. And then I stuck the magnets in using epoxy glue, let it, let it cure overnight and now everything's done. Mm -hmm.